Hey brothers and sisters, how you doing? This is Brett Hancock. I just want to do a quick video, just walk you through a high level aerial view of the Old Testament real quick. First we're going to start out with the book of Genesis. So first we got Adam and Eve, we got the Garden of Eden, and then they have two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain kills his brother Abel. Um, they have another son, Seth. Uh, I think it's Genesis chapter 5 that says that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters. This is where their wives come from. Uh, fast forward, increasing amount of wickedness. Uh, along this time frame, we got Enoch. He ends up walking with God, and God takes him. He, he didn't die, right? And so, go a little further, and we've got basically the global flood with Noah. We got his three sons. They are basically in the ark for about a year. They come out. They got the three sons. Um, Noah ends up distributing the land between them: Ham, Japheth, and Shem. And Ham ends up getting um, cursed because of some wicked stuff that he ends up doing towards his father. And so it's actually Ham's not cursed, but his, his son Cain, Cain is, is cursed. Canaan is cursed. And so, but anyway, so uh, with these three sons, they end up, you know, having, you know, all their sons and everything. And so through the line of Shem, that's where Shem, Sem, some languages might say Sem. That's where Semites, the word Semite would come from. So when somebody's anti-Semitic, you know, they're kind of, uh, you know, against Hebrews or against Jews. So, um, so through the line of Sem or Shem, um, we basically get... You know Abraham and so Abraham is really seeking God and so God ends up calling Abraham out of you know out of his land from from his family who's idolatrous and wicked and everything and takes his wife takes his family and ends up going off and he just follows God and God promises that he'd give him a son he makes him wait goes through a lot of testing a long time before he gets that son and that son would be Isaac um, Isaac ends up having two sons uh, actually two twins um, Esau and Jacob Jacob was, or Esau was the firstborn, so he was the one to get the birthright. Jacob was the secondborn. Um, Esau, uh, you know, was kind of hunting one day, very hungry. Ended up making a really silly, uh, you know, agreement, covenant with his, with his brother that he was going to give up, you know, the birthright, uh, you know, just for a bowl of stew or porridge or chili or something, whatever it was. So, uh, so he ends up, you know, ends up losing it. So, long story short. And so Jacob ends up, you know, leaving the, the family, ends up kind of taking the, the birthright from Esau because he had promised him. He kind of bamboozled him to get it. So he flees in fear. And so he uh, goes and he ends up meeting, I think it's his, uh, his cousin, I think it is, um, uh, uh, Rebecca, that he ends up marrying. And so his uncle Laban kind of deceives him a little bit. He ends up with the first wife, which was the oldest. And he didn't realize that's who he was marrying. He ends up with the second wife, which is the one he wanted to marry. They have concubines, or they have you know concubines or, or maid servants. Um, and so between those four, um, he ends up having twelve sons. And these are the twelve sons, the twelve patriarchs of Israel. Um, the second, the last son is Joseph. Um, they're all the brothers are jealous of Joseph. The, the youngest, I don't think at this point has even been born yet, or he's very young, Benjamin. Um, but all the older brothers, they're very jealous of him. They end up selling him into slavery, and so Joseph ends up in Egypt, and he goes through a really hard time. And during this time, his, his father Jacob thinks that his son is dead, because that's how they portray it to, to him, that the brothers portray it to Jacob. It, it, you know, he got eaten by wolves or something, whatever. So they were lying to their father. So he ends up in um, Egypt. Um, he just constantly is trying to do what is right, what is righteous. And just goes through a really hard time. He gets falsely accused of raping his boss's, basically the you know the, the slave owner, um, his wife, who tried to basically have her way with him, and he wasn't gonna, he wasn't having it. So he ended up fleeing out. And so he gets falsely accused of trying to rape her, and so he ends up in jail. So he goes through a really hard time in jail, and ends up getting you know through God gives him the ability to interpret dreams. Pharaoh finds out about that. Pharaoh's having all these freaky dreams repeatedly and so he calls him in has him interpret these dreams super impressed with the guy and so he finds out that these dreams interpreted means there's gonna be seven years of plenty and then seven seven years of calamity or seven years of uh, drought you know and, and uh, no harvest and stuff so so he ends up hiring joseph to be governor of egypt to be second in command over all egypt so um so Joseph is, you know, becoming a mature man by this point. He was just a young man when his brothers betrayed him. So by this point, when the seven years um, of good, you know, pass, and of course, you know, God gave him the wisdom to store up, you know, during those seven years. And then when the seven years of drought and, you know, no harvest, you know, kick in, well, then at this time, you know, after that time, Jacob ends up sending his sons to Egypt to buy food. Well, 
Joseph, they end up getting reunited. Joseph puts them through a really hard time to test them to see if they're really repentant. And basically his family, Jacob and everything, Jacob and his son, Joseph, get reunited. Jacob is like crying, like, well, you know, I didn't, I thought you were dead, you know, and everything, whatever. So they get reunited. And so um, basically they're in Egypt now, but they're basically living the prosperity life. I mean, everything is great. Well, over a course of time, you know, when Joseph dies, when that Pharaoh dies, successive you know generations go. The new, the Hebrews are getting very numerous. Egyptians are getting very afraid and freaked out, so they end up enslaving these people. Well, you know, Ab God had told Abraham this was going to happen. Four hundred years, you know, later, this is what God is telling Abraham. He's telling him in Genesis, four hundred years from now, your descendants are going to be enslaved in Egypt or whatever. But I'm going to raise up somebody to lead them out and everything. So. Um, so that's what happens. God ends up raising up um, Moses. So this is the beginning of the book of uh, Exodus. So Moses uh, ends up, uh, you know, I mean, Pharaoh is trying to kill all the babies. Moses ends up, you know, because of that, um, you know, being picked up. His family puts him in a little basket in the Nile River to save his life. And the daughter of Pharaoh ends up finding him, raises Moses. Um, he raises up. Long story short, he ends up uh, killing an Egyptian to save um, an Israelite, and you know he ends up leaving. And he spends 40 years in the desert, um, basically in Midian. He ends up marrying the uh, Jethro, the, the priest of Midian's daughter, and uh, ends up, um, you know, finally after 40 years. So he left when he was 40. Now is another 40 years. So now here he's like 80 years old. He appears. God appears to him in a in a burning bush. He ends up sending him back to Israel to set the people free. He sets these people free. They go wandering through the desert for like 40 years. And, you know, uh, basically their descendants, without going into a lot of detail, end up going into the promised land. Um, and, you know, basically Joshua, which is Yeshua in Hebrew, um, which in Greek is Jesus. And when we bring Jesus or Yeshua into English, uh, well, when we bring Jesus into English, it becomes Jesus, right? So that's how Jesus means the same thing as Yeshua, which means, you know, Yahweh saves. So anyway, so Moses' um, successor, he ends up renaming him the name of the Savior, right? So he ends up leading them into the Promised Land, and then uh, basically they conquer all the peoples that are occupying the land there. They take the land. They're following the law of Moses um, as long as Yeshua, or as long as Jesus or Joshua is still alive. And so um, after he dies, that gets us into the book of Judges. And so within a short period of time, all the people were kind of going their own way. And they were kind of wandering away from the law of Moses. And even physically, um, they're all like separate from each other too. So um, it just becomes a mess in the book of Judges. So, but they end up, um, God ends up sending them judges for a period of years. Samson was one of them. This is the story of Samson, uh, Deborah, uh, some others. Um, and so basically the last judge is, is Samuel. This leads into the book of 1 Samuel. So the book of 1 Samuel um, in there, uh, you know, uh, you know, I won't go into the story of Samuel's life, but basically we get our first king, King Saul, and he's from the tribe of Benjamin, and he's king for 40 years. And then, you know, for uh, uh, he starts out great. He's very humble in the beginning, but by the end of the 40 years, he's become arrogant. He's disobeying God. God takes the kingdom from him, gives it to a man after his own heart, which is King David. And so uh, David gets anointed as king. He uh, ends up going into service, working for Saul for a period of time. Um, and, you know, he goes through a period of trial during this time. So God uses that to kind of prepare him to become king. Not to mention he used the period as him as shepherding sheep as well, to be the shepherd of his people. So um, David gets prepared for all this. He's king for 40 years. And then he has a son, Solomon. He has a bunch of sons um, or a bunch of uh, children um, through different wives. But through um, his wife Bathsheba, he ends up having a son, Solomon. Solomon ends up becoming king um, for 40 years. So they're all kings. So Saul and David and uh, Solomon are all king for 40 years. Solomon starts out great. God says, hey, because of my relationship with David, I'll give you whatever you want. You tell me what you want, I'll give it to you. And so um, he could have asked for wealth or something, whatever, uh, beautiful women or whatever, but he didn't. He asked for wisdom to govern God's people. So because of that, God blessed him and, and actually gave him a test by actually blessing him with wealth as well. Many people don't realize that wealth is actually a test. What are you going to do with that money? Um, and so... Uh, 
so by the end of Solomon's 40 year career as a king he's digressed and gone downhill and stuff and so he's married all these um, pagan wives the, the law of Moses said don't marry pagan wives that serve idols because they'll they'll draw you into it that's exactly what happened with Solomon he had over 700 wives and that was happening to him in a big way he was building temples for their demonic idolatry and stuff whatever so uh, basically uh, you know he ends up uh, doing that and then God says you know what not in your lifetime because of your father David I won't do it in your lifetime but when your son becomes king I'm going to tear the kingdom I'm going to rip the kingdom in half and so uh, so that's what happens so somebody that worked for Solomon you know his name was Jeroboam once his son uh, Solomon's son Rehoboam Rehoboam becomes king this guy Jeroboam name is almost the same it starts with a J um, ends up you know, taking, you know, 10 tribes away from him. Well, Rehoboam kind of drives him up because Rehoboam is a super harsh man and all his friends and, you know, advisors and stuff give him really harsh advice. So the people kind of get tired of that nonsense and they end up leaving and rebelling. So 10 tribes leave with Jeroboam and they go north. They end up ultimately, they initially settle in Bethel, but they end up um, settling in Samaria within a few generations of kings. They have 19 kings and I think... I forget what number of king it was. It was King Omri, but uh, but that's the one that got him into Samaria. Bought this big piece of land, and, and, and that's where they settled in Samaria. That's the people end up becoming Samaritans. But anyway, so those 19 kings, by every single king is wicked. Every single king is idolatrous. And so um, by the end of those 19 kings, God had had enough. He gives the superpower at that time, which is the Assyrians, to conquer them, take them into slavery, into exile. And so uh, that was around 700 B.C. Uh, Prophet Isaiah has been, pro you know, preaching to them, prophesying to them, writing his book, and, and they're not paying attention to him, so they didn't repent, so he gives them into slavery. Uh, meanwhile, the southern tribe, during all this period of time, has kind of flip-flopped in between a good king, bad king. A king, you know, bad kings are idolatrous and serving demons, idols, um, and then the good kings, they kind of tear all those things down, or at least some of the kings don't tear all of them down, it's, tear a lot of them down those idol, idol temples and idols and destroy them and everything so anyway they're flip-flopping back and forth so they last longer so after Assyria gets conquered by um, Babylonia which is King Nebuchadnezzar um, around 600-ish um, BC um, that's when uh, you know God starts giving them over you know to uh, uh, be conquered by Nebuchadnezzar with them and so about 586 BC is when um, the final set of exiles gets taken off to Babylonia Jerusalem gets leveled destroyed burnt to the ground all the gold and all the the, the Ark of the Covenant everything gets taken to Babylonia so anyway Jeremiah had been prophet during this period of time for a long period of time calling these people to repent and they wouldn't repent and so he prophesied they would be in that mess for 70 years at the end of that 70 years um, by this time, the Persian Mideast Empire had conquered the Babylonian Empire. So now the Persian Mideast Empire, um, you know, basically King Cyrus, ends up sending uh, a bunch of exiles back to Jerusalem, just as been prophesied that King Cyrus would, you know, to Isaiah. And then Daniel was showing this prophecy to uh, King Cyrus, and it moves his heart, and he does exactly what the Scripture says. Sends these people back, and they rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And so uh, eventually God sends, you know, Ezra and Nehemiah um, back uh, to uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Ezra would be the Levitical priest to get them back on board following the law of Moses. And then Nehemiah would be the governor that would kind of, you know, help build the wall around the city and then also just be governor. And uh, so this is pretty much chronologically the end of the Old Testament. Around this time frame, Malachi was sent as prophet. And so this is the end of the Old Testament. So... Um, like I said, there's three kings there in the United Kingdom, Saul, and then David, and then uh, Solomon. There's kings for 40 years each. And then, you know, the divided kingdom after that. Each of those kingdoms, both the southern kingdom, which I guess I didn't mention, uh, which was the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. And they had 19 kings up until 586 when Babylonia, King Nebuchadnezzar, took them in. Uh, meanwhile, in parallel with that, the other northern kingdom that went north, that was the other 10 tribes, the remaining tribes, and they had 19 kings. And like I said, right around, somewhere around 700 B.C., they were taken into exile to Assyria. And so uh, 
So that's, that's the story. I hope that helps you uh, understand the Old Testament. I hope it helps you when you're studying the Old Testament because it always helps for me, whatever it is I'm studying, to always look at the overview first and get a full aerial, full scale, top down view, what's going on, what to expect. So when I'm at the ground level and I'm reading all the details, I can kind of put it together in my mind, especially when you're reading like the Old Testament is not all chronologically laid out and stuff. So you'll be reading things and, you know, as you're thinking, you're reading from the front of Genesis all the way till you get to the last book of the Old Testament, which is Malachi. Many people are under the impression that it's written out chronologically. And it's not necessarily. Some of it is kind of chronologically laid out, but some of it's not. So I hope that helps you. God bless you.